Good morning. Happy holidays. Hello, everybody. How's everybody doing? Happy holidays. We're good. Thank you. Anyway, we are so happy that you guys um, have been able to join us this yeah. holiday weekend. And so everyone knows we are uh, also live on Instagram. We are live on Facebook. And I believe we're also live on YouTube. So anyway, uh, for the newbies, uh, Anthony, why don't you just spend a couple minutes, two right. minutes on uh, the newbies uh, about what we're going to do today, and then we'll dive into some really exciting So uh, the way channeling. it works, um, we're going to channel. For anyone who hasn't seen any channeling, just have an open mind. Spirit will start coming through us. Actually, we'll come through Renee first, and then it comes into me. Uh, I'll just explain it very simply. It comes through her crown chakra, solar plexus, into my solar plexus, and back out, and then back out of my crown chakra. And um, that is what makes it pretty unique: is that I am not the the main channeler here. It actually has to go through Renee first before it comes to me. And there is a balance there. There's always divine feminine, divine masculine balance, and that's pretty much how it works. And, um, but obviously Anthony's, um, body, if you like his energy body is the one that appears to be physically altered. So yeah. they fully embrace his auric field and he goes into a trance state. And so, um, what we're going to do today is just an hour or so, depending we'll, we'll probably go over cause we're never on time and our guides certainly don't have any idea of time. So we'll just leave the floor open and you guys can ask whatever questions are most on your mind this holiday season. Um, really anything, you know, that you'd like to challenge our guides with is great. They will tend not to answer very, you know, very personal questions in a public forum like this. So just bear that in mind. Things like, should I stay in my marriage is probably off limits. <laughs> And so who comes through is largely the ascended masters. So it's a group of energies that speak collectively as one voice when they come through. And if the energies change, it's largely because you guys call them forth. So whoever's in this virtual room is what calls the energy source into audio. So we'll just ask that everybody mute their... Uh, mute themselves if you can, because there's quite a large group today. We had over 70 people register, so people may kind of trickle in. Right. And just post the questions. Um, I think because it's such a large group, rather than raising your hand, which is a really cool Zoom feature, just put your question in the text box and we'll take them. Um, always can. challenge them. Uh, we love, Renee and I will challenge them every single night. We ask them the most difficult possible questions there is, and we see where it goes from there. And a lot of times <clears throat> we learn new things yeah. on calls like this, believe it or not. We never know what's going to happen. So um, it's always a wild ride. It is. So just have an open mind and an open heart. When they come through, they're going to refer to her as Gaia. She is really the grounding cord as you will, as you know, for me, when I'm start going off into the ethers. Um, so yeah, they will refer to her as Gaia. And then you'll see me going into different, um, as the energies come in and come out of my auric field, you'll see a difference um, with my face expressions. And his breathing. Breathing. Everything's going to start to slow down. You'll see my breathing go into what um, I refer to as an ujjayi breath for all the yogis and yoginis out there. Everything's going to slow down. And again, that's how you really connect. We connect through our heart, not through our, not through our mind. It's really through our heart that we connect. And they want you to know all of that. Yeah. Really just kind of slowing down and being connected with everything that is. So I can feel them. Um, I, I feel them all the time. They're always around and my body is electric. So we are going to slowly start to connect. Renee, if you want to play some of your- crystals. Yeah, so Gloriana is saying that the audio keeps going in and out. So is everybody mm. good with the audio? Yeah, let's see here. Yes, okay. All right, let's see. Yes, still, we're just, I'm just triple checking the audio. When they come through, Renee might tell them to speak up and they'll look <laughs> at her strangely as they always do and then they'll probably <laughs> elevate um they'll elevate the energy through me so they can speak up a little bit louder mm. 
So with that, we'll get started. We don't really have a theme today, except for you could say Christmas renewal. It's a Christmas or a New Year renewal. We're going to call it that, right? Yeah. To give them some idea. Ooh, forgiveness. Ooh, good question. All right. Okay, so questions are already starting to come through, which is awesome. Mm. So everybody just um, feel yourself. Uh, grounded and and connected and just take a few deep breaths in and out and we're going to connect and bring forth our guides now mm. He's connecting now to these other dimensions. <sighs> and our guides are coming through. Yes. It is always an honor and privilege to be in your presence, Gaia. Let's slow down a little bit, shall we? Yes, Gaia. Let's you? slow down a little bit. Okay. We know why we are here. We are the ascended masters, as you call us. We really don't have a name, <laughs> but you may call us whatever you decide. Remember, we will tell you this in the beginning and we will tell you this in the end, that there's no separation between us and you. We are you, you are us. There is no separation of these energies. There is only an individualization of your energy having a beautiful experience. You are always in control, remember that. We cannot work with you or through you unless you give us permission as the soul. But we are here now to assist you all, teach you, work with you, enlighten you, enliven you. Whatever you call it, that is what we will do with you and for you. We believe you call this now a renewal of energies for a new year. That's good. <laughs> that is beautiful. A renewal. Let's start with that. A renewal. Yes. Where do you all see yourselves now? Are you rebirthed? Is there a renaissance occurring? There is in each of you, in all of you, because you're here at this very moment. Because you are here, you are rebirthing yourselves again. You are energizing your bodies. You are waking up to who you truly are in this lifetime, in this very moment of time. The perception that you have is having an experience now. And each time you have this experience, you are having the experience not only for you, but for all of you and all that are around you at this very moment. We know that sometimes this is difficult, but your frequency and vibrations literally have ripple effects throughout the whole. 
the source, all things. Remember, you are all things. You are source energy first. And we are, will always be here to remind you of that so that you may wake up. Again, thank you. <laughs> Questions, please. Yes. One of my favorites, forgiveness. So uh, the first question is, how does forgiving another actually free yourself? And what does it mean to be free? Yeah, forgiveness is such a challenging one for humanity. Hmm. We love these questions. <laughs> now, what does it first mean to be free? Well, we don't know. That's why we're here to assist you. What does it mean to be free to you? <clears throat> well, and how does forgiving yes. another free yourself? Mm, good question. Mm. One second, please. Mm. Forgiveness. To pardon. Perdonner, pardonner, perdonare, forgive, forget. You may never forget the incident. You may never forget what happened, but you must forgive. For that when you forgive, what you are doing in essence is that you are bringing source energy into these wounds, these frequencies, these shadows that keep you from moving forward, that maintain you here in this earth realm, in this three-dimensional reality. You are here to wake up. And one way of re-energizing yourself and rebirthing yourself is through for the forgiveness. 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 It's not easy, but it is a practice. All things are a practice. Your ascension is a practice. Your meditations and prayers are a practice. You must see yourself always in the light of love. And when you're in the light of love, you are always in a light of forgiveness. See yourself always forgiving others, no matter how difficult it may be. As Anthony says, kill them with kindness. Yes, kill them with kindness. Be a warrior of love. A warrior nevertheless, but be of love all the time. Forgiveness is just one way of enlightening yourself again. And we ask all of you to work on this constantly, a daily practice of forgiveness, but not only forgiveness of others, but most importantly, forgiveness of oneself, forgiveness of the higher self that you are. It is difficult to work with others and to heal others, to counsel others, unless you have truly forgiven yourself. Please be kind to you. Be of peace, be of love, be of forgiveness. And you will pass these aspects of your higher self to others. So yes, forgiveness will set you free. It is the initiation, the spark that will allow you to bring in the love energy that you need to continue on this spiritual awakening. That's all. <laughs> all right, well, the next one has to do with <clears throat> what does it mean to be a star seed here on earth? Language that of course humans give up. We understand. <laughs> a star seed. Mm. A mustard seed. <laughs> as Yeshua would call it. Yes. 
how deep do you desire your roots grow into Mother Earth? How high do you desire that your limbs and branches stretch into the heavens? That is dependent upon you and your path. What does it mean to be a star seed? We're going to tell you this. You decide on how big you wish to grow. You decide where you desire to plant your seed. Where do you desire to resonate? What frequency, what amplitude? How quickly do you want to vibrate? How do you wish to sway your branches? That is what it means to be a star seed. A star seed is understanding and the acknowledgement that you understand that you are everything and that you are nothing. And you must find the Hermes, <laughs> the golden mean, as above, so below, as within, so without. You must find that. And when you do, then you will understand that you are one of an infinite amount of star seeds that is connected to the whole of everything. And that there's no separation between your star seed and all of the infinite amount of other star seeds as well. We are among you. <laughs> we are with you. We are working with you through you, and we wish you to know that all of you star seeds, we are no different than you. We are the same. That is all. <laughs> so the great conjunction, which just happened, there was a lot of energy. We all felt it. All of us felt it in different ways. What will that change for us in our 3D bodies and our 3D worlds here for mm -hmm. humanity? Why is there many of you who recognize it? And why is it that there are so many of you also who do not recognize it? Your planetary system is always in flux. It is in motion, a momentum that will never stop. It's constantly changing. So what does a conjunction mean? Conjunction, it means a coming together. Is that what it means for all of you? Jupiter, Saturn, having the appearance of coming together as one. Mm. Having the appearance, so it's a perception. Yes, it is. <laughs> but what's wrong with the perception, Gaia? <laughs> are you not perceptions of this reality at this time? You are. So we wanted to tell you this. What does it mean? It means that you're coming together. And make sure you understand that and believe it and feel it. Have it in your heart. Know these things. A coming together, a conjunction, a consortium of energies. All coming together again as one. Waking up again as one. Understanding your divinity again as one. And remember that you are divine, all of you. You have begun and started your divinity, and that is where it will end as well, in your divinity. There really is no beginning and there is no end, but you must always remember that you are all divine. So does the energy of the conjunction, even though it's only a perception, is there something the energetic shifts, astral, astral, yes, there is, right? It that changes the it opens up something in us, the magnetism of who you are. It changes the energies around your earth grid, your akash, your crystalline grids, as you call them, change. And when these two planets align, remember star seeds, star dust. <laughs> you are no different than those planets. You are made up of the same elements as they are, just rearranged a bit differently. 
they have a direct effect on you, mm -hmm. just as your moon has a direct effect on your water. And you're primarily made or consist of water. Everything is relative. Everything has an effect on everything else. You just have to be aware of it. But if you're going to have a perception and awareness, have the highest and the best. That is all. This is a great question from Jennifer. How can we ask for the highest guides? I don't know if she means guides or guidance, or is our divine presence, AKA or higher, higher self, um, just as evolved as the highest guides or the highest guided? Anthony asks us that all the time. All the time. We talk to our guides about all this all the time because coming through and speaking is both our guides and our higher selves collectively as one. That is correct. You are right. Correcto. <laughs> Recte. Understand this. As we told you from the very beginning, we are no different than you. So who are your highest guides? Well, they're a little bit of you. They are your higher self. They are the soul. They are the divine seed that you are. And the ancestors. Your ancestors are nothing more than all of the other yous mm. that you have, had, will have <laughs> in this lifetime. You see, your guides are a part of you as well. But always see yourself as divine, as source energy, prime one, the first, the highest, second to none. That is who you are, and that is what you will receive. Remember, you are the perceptions of this experience. So have the best perceptions so that you create the highest experience. So is that how we would embody our master self or our higher self more fully in a more fully way, a more full and integrated way? Yes, of course. You need only think of it. Your intentions are one of the most powerful parts of who you are as a being. And this is why self-love is so important and where it, and why it needs to start there. Because if you can't embrace yourself fully in that place of divine love, then you cannot bring that master or higher self forward. And that is why you must always forgive. And we told you before, don't only forgive others, but you must forgive yourself first. And that is the most important thing. You must love yourself for who you are in this experience at this time. Mm. Very good. That is all. <laughs> Can it also be explained how our body diva is also evolving, has its own higher self, and is the same body diva with us in each lifetime? Interesting language. <laughs> diva. We like that term, diva. It's a goddess form. Yes. Is your diva, your <laughs> goddess form with you in every lifetime? I like that, Jennifer. That's, that's good. <laughs> yes, it is. It always is but you are only a projection of what you want that diva to realize itself as. You must acknowledge the diva in you and see the diva of whom you are again in this lifetime. You are all divas. You are all <laughs> gods and goddesses. You just have forgotten it, but we are here to remind you of that. We are here to remind you that you're all divas inside and out. Maybe you could explain the tree analogy of how we can access the light of those individual and collective divas that we all have access to and how we can bring them into this individual experience as an example. Mm. <laughs> Why don't you explain it? I love, that was the analogy that really worked for me. When you talk about all of the 
pine needles or leaves on a tree and each of these leaves and each of, or you can see it as pine Speak needles. Up, please. <laughs> Are you giving me a heart? You get <laughs> Speak up, please. Okay. So our guides often tell us that if you can imagine each of our lives, if you like, our past, present, parallel experiences, because there is no past and there is no future, imagine them as leaves on a tree. And each of these are all individual experiences and ancestors. And each of those have, if you like, Jennifer, that archetype of a diva that you have been in the past in another experience. And you can always bring that into your current reality. You decide on what light what energy that you wish to give to your diva, which leaf. So it's which... like invoking it through an intention and a meditation. You're literally invoking and lighting that light up brighter. That is correct. Or that pine needle that you once were. Bring light and love to it. It is like lighting your Christmas tree. When one light goes out, it will affect the others. Make sure that you plug in the correct lights, the highest and the brightest lights, so that they're all working simultaneously at one time. These are all of the lights that you truly are in this particular lifetime. That is your diva. <coughs> Jeff has an interesting question. So he says he was told by someone's inner child that our inner child is not wounded. What is wounded is the memory the adult carries of that event. Can you say anything about this? Yes. Great question. Jeff. Always has such good questions. <laughs> what is wounded? Vulnerable. It's like a memory imprint almost. We wish to tell you this. Again, there are many individuals out there that will assist you into getting you onto the right path to help your wounded self, if you will. But we tell you these things and we say this in truth, in truth. In truth, your woundedness is again, nothing more than your own perception of what your reality is in this experience. How do you change that? You must see yourself as a different being. You must see yourself as connected directly to source energy. You must see yourself as being love energy prime first. That all of the experiences that you had in this one lifetime does not make up or consist of whom you truly are at this time. It is nothing more than a grain of sand in the vast desert of sands. Remember, you are everything. Don't take one grain of sand and say that this everything that you are and look at that grain of sand and say, this is who I am. That is not correct. You are as vast as the stars that you see in the sky behind you that Anthony and Renee have behind them. Pick out one star and then connect them to all of them because that's who you are. Don't only focus on the one, focus on the all. We told you, you are everything and you are nothing. You must find the everything in that nothingness. And then you focus on that energy and you have the intentions mm -hmm. that what happened to you in your perceived lifetime is not who you really are. It's just a perception. It's an illusion. It is an experience, isn't it? <laughs> we know illusion is difficult to understand. It doesn't do justice to who you are as an energy being. Allow your energy bodies to be connected to all things. 
And then all of these perceptions of what you have experienced will slowly dissipate. All of the leaves on your trees will be energized again. Mm. That is all. Because you can't squash the wounded self. You can only bring light to it. Yes. Do not squash it. Do not sit on it, but bring light to it. And there are many light workers out there that will assist you in doing this. There is no one path. You must find the path and then take it. And it will constantly change like the motion of your planets in your own solar system. Mm. So you're ready to talk about soul groups. So uh, yes, there are soul groups, Eileen, for sure. <laughs> so in soul groups, is it true that souls reincarnate together? And so I might be a mother and my father in this life is my son in the next life. Do we work through karma in a soul group? First and foremost, Let's do away with the word karma. Yes. It's a lower vibrational energy. I believe you call yourselves, you are in a new age of Aquarius, something of that sort. Yes. No need for karma, karma anymore. Now you are in a new age. So. Can you explain that to people who have maybe come up through training or spiritual awakening through Eastern religions or Eastern spiritual belief systems and still connect to that word karma in some way? It's no different than in many of your other religions that try to give you the rules by which you must obey in order to have an experience a transcendental experience of God, of your God self, your goddess self. We are telling you here, there are no rules. There are no ways. There is only you. You must have this. If you decide to play by certain rules that other give you, then do so. But we tell you this, there are no rules. You do not have karma unless you truly believe that you do. The soul members, the soul groups do exist. They are always around you, however, only for a certain period of time. And what we mean by that is there are experiences that you all decide on having. You will circle yourselves, if you will. You will frequence together during multiple lifetimes. And when that one experience has been realized and acknowledged, you may change your soul group if you desire. But you may not be with those individuals throughout your entire life experience. They may just flow in and out so that you can have an experience to learn and grow and then disappear. Disappear? Well, not be an active part of their physical lives anymore. In a manner of speaking, yes. An energy that was once in your soul group may no longer be of service if you decide. You both must be in agreement, concordia, we like, of hearts being together when it is time to change a soul group. But soul groups may last, last. There is no lasting, there is no duration, there is no time, there only is. They are just experiences, that's all. We know it's difficult to explain, but see yourselves as timeless beings, being able to enter, exit, whatever, whatever realm you decide, that is who you truly are. That is who we are. So they, in our human 3D linear ways, of, you could say that soul groups perceived to be, could last for thousands of years. So groups could last not just thousands of years, but for eons. Hmm. There is no concept of time 
here. There only is. There is only the accepting of who you are, that we are all together here to assist each other on our paths, spiritual. More questions? Yeah, Jillian has a good one. Uh, to what is the extent of our beliefs? If someone believed 100% that chocolate sugar candy was healthy, would they be healthy? <laughs> what limitations or laws affect our beliefs? Great question. Remember, within this particular frequency, within this particular realm, we are having a conjunction, a mass consciousness experience. It is not just your belief system, it's but the belief system of all the collective. That is correct. It is a collective consciousness. And this applies to COVID too. So that's why. Now, <laughs> if you all start to have a collective consciousness that chocolate is healing and it does have healing effects on you as a species, it will be. You must have a collective consciousness. Not just an individual one. Go beyond your Newtonian laws of physics and then you will start to see a change in your species. It is happening, albeit the perception of being slow, but it is occurring little by little, step by step. You understand, don't you? <laughs> you must all be in a frequency, a vibration, a universal consciousness for things to occur, for miracles, as you call them, to happen. But this is happening at this very moment. This is what we call a miracle because you are all here at this particular time having a conscious, mass consciousness of love coming to you at this time. You are changing. You are mutating. You are transcending your own consciousness at this very moment. And that is affecting not just you, but the whole of all of you at this time. So it's like the strength of your own individual consciousness having a ripple effect on others and that over time that ripple effect will shift that natural law, if you like, or that universal law. Yes, it's that simple. Julian, does that make sense? Hopefully that got answered. <laughs> if not, feel free to probe deeper. So uh, the next question is, humankind has witnessed the presence of avatars throughout the ages, such as Ram Das, Krishna, Buddha, um, Yeshua, Muhammad. Will there be a time when humankind will not experience the presence of avatars on Earth? What is an avatar? <laughs> is that a being that is something far more than you are? Is that what an avatar is? That is our perception. <laughs> they were nothing more than beings having a transcendental experience as you are at this time. Anthony's having it at this time, but so are you. It's just manifesting differently. You see, all of those great teachers weren't necessarily avatars. It was truly their higher self, the soul, the divine self speaking at that particular time, at that frequency, at that vibration that it truly was in that lifetime. As an energy being. You are all avatars if you choose to be, and we will work with you and you will realize and acknowledge that you are all divine source energies and that you all have the ability to heal, not just through your hands, but with your words, with your eyes. The look, <laughs> the look is so important, isn't it? Through your soul, your eyes will look and heal as well. You all have that. 
that was Yeshua's prime message. If you read the Gnostic Gospels, the Gospel of Thomas, the real true teachings of Yeshua, it was that we all had that divine presence, that avatar within us that could just come forward just as it did. You all have divine feminine mm -hmm. and divine masculine energies within you, and they may all be balanced if you choose. And you can be the avatar in this lifetime, the diva, <laughs> the god or goddess that you truly are and have that experience, not just for you, but for all who are in your field at this time. Mm. Avatar, we like that word. <laughs> So speaking of stars and planets, are we now evolving into a new earth and will we start to see things differently and even start to integrate with other planets and travel to them and those on those planets be accepted here finally? Mm. A new earth. <clears throat> Let's get a little bit quantum in you, okay? Mm-hmm. As we said before, you're having a collective consciousness experience, and that holds a certain density and frequency, a certain vibration and amplitude of vibrations. As your earth shifts, changes, it will change its frequency, it will change its vibrational pattern, and as Metatron likes to say, it will change it's symbols, sacred symbols. Sacred geometry. So think of like, you guys used a really interesting word there. They use density. So they'll often explain that we are very dense beings compared to other beings that live in other planets and other dimensions. And so if this density of us carries one vibration, think of another planet with lighter form beings carrying a different vibration. And so we're literally just moving, shifting to a lighter, faster vibration. We couldn't have said that better. Well said, Gaia. Oh, thanks guys. <clears throat> you. I have good teachers. Yes. <laughs> you are changing your vibrational pattern at this time, but it does take time because it must be done one soul at a time. And there must be a collective consciousness that this is occurring now. That collective consciousness is a very small percentage though. Do you wanna to speak to that? It, it doesn't require that much of our entire global population to shift the consciousness, to become that collective consciousness. It's about 1%, isn't it? We don't look at percentages. We only look at energies. <laughs> but you may liken it like a bunch of dominoes, dominoes. When one falls or one has the experience, a transcendental experience, a higher consciousness experience, then it will affect the other domino and the other domino and the other domino. And that's what is happening now on your earth plane. One day, what you perceive here will be a completely different perception. And that's happening now. With an, your own earth plane, mm. there are beings that exist and frequent within different vibrational patterns. <clears throat> sometimes they come in, sometimes they go out, just as you. Sometimes you enter and sometimes you exit into those other frequencies. Each planet within your own solar system has its own frequency as well. So it's not like we go somewhere else. We just change our frequency. And therefore, when we do that, we connect. We, we see, we perceive things differently at a different frequency. And so that's why it's really important to spend time with people who are at the same frequency. And we will do. say this. Very well said, Gaia. But remember, you are energy first. Mm. You are spirit first. Your energy bodies 
once you begin to have a collective consciousness that you are true source energy, your energy bodies will change. The DNA that makes you up will begin again to lighten up, enliven again. But again, we tell you this, you are on the right path. Stay there and continue. <laughs> it's a practice, isn't it? Yes, it is. Say that again. <laughs> Another question, please. So Gravani wants to know, many older Eastern traditions say a human birth is the highest form of birth because only human beings can awaken. This is a very human-centric view. Can you speak to the capacity for consciousness to awaken in plants, trees, and animals? And for those of us who eat meat, the way to honor the gifts of food from animals, and for that matter, the gifts of food from plants. We are going to first speak to you about being a human being. You're very unique species. We've told you this before. We will tell you again, whether Anthony believes it or not, because he's <laughs> always getting in the way of these messages. <laughs> You are made up of many different species. Species that you have no idea of, but they are here assisting you. Is it special, the birth of a human being? Well, we see it so. We see it as being very special. Is it the most special? Yes and no. It all depends on your own perspective. Where do you wish to see it? Have you never seen the birth of a baby? Have you held a baby, looked into its eyes and connected with it? That is special, isn't it? How is that different than other species? Well, we'll tell you. <laughs> <clears throat> You all have a connective consciousness, no matter what type of energy you are. You are all truly connected to everything, even the plants that you grow. Before you cut them, tell them what you're going to do and allow them to understand why you're doing it. The meat that you eat, give thanks for allowing it to give you nutrition, the vitamins, the energy that you need. All creatures, plants, animals, insects are all interconnected. There is no separation between you and the ant that you step on. You understand this? Everything has its own vibrational pattern. Does an ant have consciousness? Does an ant have consciousness? Not in the way that you conceive it, no, it doesn't. Not the way that you understand it, no, it doesn't. But we will tell you this, the energy of that ant that you step on is connected to the whole as well. And why is it connected to the whole? Because we will go back to the beginning. You're all stardust, star seeds. Your atoms are just arranged a bit differently. That's all. From a quantum perspective. That is correct. Mm. Yes. <clears throat> Very good questions. Yeah. We appreciate it. We appreciate the challenge. Yeah, it's a great question. Are um, there more? Yes, there are. Um, oh, a crystal question. Jennifer, you and I would hit it off. <laughs> she has some great questions. And crystals, my favorite, one of my favorite things. Can the energy from crystals and the capacity of the crystals energy raise consciousness and use it for healing tools be explained? We're surrounded by crystals right now. We have 
create a beautiful altar before we do any <clears> session <throat> like this. So we're, we use crystals all the time. Crystals are like medicine. Mm. You may place your intention into it. You may place your intention into a glass of water. And when you place an intention of love and healing into a glass of water, you have already seen how it changes all of its molecular structures. The forms it takes are sacred, depending on your intention, your beliefs. The same is true with a crystal. You may place your energy of love and healing energy within that crystal and you may use it as a tool, as a form of healing. And there are many of you who have had these experiences <clears throat> and you create art and music as a result. And you use that art and you use that music as a form of healing, just like your crystal bowls. And oracle cards, right? So the intention through <clears throat> certain sacred geometry shapes and things like crystal cards even can be programmed. We actually program one day crystals, your species of human beings. And we're going to refer to you again in this new age as homo sapien, 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 <laughs> because you're all becoming enlightened more now than ever before. You will go back again and you will understand the importance of your crystals and you will heal with them once again. You will connect your science and your spirituality once again, they will be together. It is slowly happening at this time. We always like to say <clears throat> when you get crystals, clear them um, and, or you could clear them and allow any helpful energy, which already exists in it to remain that will serve you because there could be some energy that is serving in that particular crystal. And then you can even program it around certain ailments, which we do. We have certain crystals that are for respiratory, for example. So it, they're, they're very powerful when, and when Anthony gets sick, which is very rare, I, throw him on the ground and surround him by crystals and he heals pretty quickly. <laughs> he heals quicker now than ever before. Yes. Yes. But why is that? His vibration, I guess, is purring a little faster than it has in the past. That as well. But he has a true sense and a true faith that we are here to assist mm. and that what he is experiencing at this time if it be pain or discomfort, we will assist with it. He knows that we are here to assist him. We are here to assist all of you. We don't wish any of you to be in pain or suffer. It is not beneficial to you as a species, to your collective consciousness. It is better that you know who you are so that you may heal others. Know thyself and you will know thy goddess. We can assure you of these things. Continue, please. Speaking of goddesses, um, Diane wants to know symbolism around crows. Um, she says they're circling above her house almost every evening lately. Do they have a spiritual meaning? And if so, what's their spiritual Your meaning? spiritual meaning on a crow is dependent upon your own perspective. But what does it mean? What does one bird mean over another? Well, yes, crows are always often associated with different goddesses. Morrigan is one of them. <laughs> it is nothing more than a rebirth, a renewal of energies. <clears throat> they clean up. We call them, in what Anthony says, they are the sanitation engineers <laughs> of your planet. One of them anyway. They clean up garbage that you don't want around. You might see them as cleaning you, cleansing you, purging you of the old you as you enter into a new age, as you enter into a new being. So let's say that, that this energy of the crow is a rebirth 
of whom you are in this lifetime. See it as positive, if that's wish what you desire to do. See it as a positive energy, a cleaning up and a purging. <clears throat> Why would you see it as being evil? Don't go there. Mm. Don't go to that vibration or frequency. It's not worth it. Don't go to fear. It's not a good vibration. It's not a frequency that serves you anymore. Go to the healing frequencies of love, peace, and above all, forgiveness. <clears throat> that's where you wish to stay. And that is where you wish to vibrate. Mm. And that's where we are at this time. And we wish to work with you and through you. Continue. Mm. It's funny because we went to Yosemite National Park last month and crows just seemed to follow us through the park. Do you remember? <laughs> Everywhere we went, there were crows. <laughs> um, Michelle wants to know which crystal is good for respiratory, which is good for pain. Uh, there's like, you know, what I would suggest rather than going, oops, but I would suggest rather than going through, I guess we can't do that. Can we do that? Yes, we can. Instagram is off after um, an hour, I guess. Um, you know, I would suggest uh, looking at Judy, Judy Hall's book for crystals. She has, um, I think four or even five different editions. We have so many crystal books. If you ping us or, you know, just ask on our private Facebook group and I'll send you some really great links for this because I'm just, if you're, if you guys are not part of our Facebook group become part of our uh, Facebook group and I can post the books there because there's just, it's too much to go into, but the best way to clear crystals is through intention. Do you want to speak to that? <laughs> well, we have stated already <clears throat> that within an attention, intention, a prayer, something meaningful, a belief system that you place into that crystal, that crystal will be healing but you must have faith and you must believe it. Do not believe, do not be swayed by others that say that you are crazy. You are not crazy. You are just having an <laughs> opening and experience again of your true self and your true connectedness to source energy and connectedness to all things. And crystals are a part of this earth realm and you are a part of this earth realm and you may use them to heal. We've seen it, we have done it and many other light workers as you call them use these crystals and other forms of magic if you wanna call it that, to heal. Mm. We encourage you all to do these things and there may be some powerful intentions in crystals that you pick up, but there could also be lower vibrational energies. So really what you want the intention is to clear any energies that don't serve you or can't assist you. Um, sometimes, we yeah. want to say one thing quickly before we must go. <laughs> Not ready to go. We have a couple more questions. We understand. <laughs> Why are we here? Why do we manifest ourselves like this through Anthony, through you? Mm -hmm. Why do we appear to be human? Because there are many of us who have been human and there are many of us who have not been human. But you, soul, and this one, had an agreement, as you call it, <laughs> to manifest us, you again, as human as possible. And that is why we manifest ourselves through both of you in this aspect. We are here to tell you there's no difference again, that we are just as human as you are. Is that why some <clears throat> ch who channel uh, energies that don't feel as human some of 
is it because perhaps their group of guides have never been human? No. It is merely their own perception of how their guides are coming through. It is how they agree to it as well. <clears throat> you see, there's no separation between us. We are you, and we will tell you that to the very end, and you are us. We are simply just reminding you, that's all. Mm -hmm. That's what a teacher does. A teacher will remind you, stay focused, stay on your path, and great things will come to you. Mm. <clears throat> More questions you have. Uh, Julian wants to know, what's the best way to connect to our spirit guide team, figure out who they are more clearly and receive the messages as clear and powerful as you and Anthony. Julian, you know, I, I don't know, I don't have the link here, but we actually have a, well, can I find it? I don't know if I can find it. Go ahead, you guys can answer that question and I will try to find this link. We will wait for you. No, no, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> How do you connect? to your spirit guides. Well, we will tell you this first. Whenever you're connecting to your spirit guides, make sure you're grounded first and foremost. And when you decide to connect to your spirit guides, make sure that they are of the highest, brightest, and best vibrations there is. Go straight to the top, as you say. Go to the highest, because that is who you are. Now, who are they exactly? Always remember that they are a part of you, your higher self, the highest part of who you are. Go with your intuition. What do you connect to in this earth experience at this time. Are you connecting with galactic energies? Are you connecting with angelic energies? Are you connecting with seraphim, cherubim energies? Are you connecting with gods and goddesses in this lifetime? Are you connecting with the elementals that were within your earth realm? Are you connecting with the ancestors, the indigenous? Are you connecting with ancient pagan you see how many different paths there are? Are you connecting with a Buddhist? An Indian tradition? Vedic tradition? Like this is the place <clears throat> to start. The place to start is what you resonate with most. Exactly. And yeah. once you start, you initiate that spark the path is going to change. Yeah. Creates it's always like this changing. Wide <clears throat> opening, right? This opening that leads to other energies coming in. So if you start with, you know, Yogananda teachings as an example, you may end up with goddesses or galactic energies or whatever. So it just keeps blossoming and opening like <clears throat> the the layers of onions just keep getting peeled back. We will tell you, do not stay on one path. Yeah. Use it as a way to ascend, if you will. Yeah. It is the first step on your path. And then once you get there, other energies will start to flow into you. But all you need is an opening of your door to the soul. And when you let that vibration in, that is when the door opens and it will not close again. It just gets wider and wider and wider. So yeah. yes, it does. <laughs> Are there more questions? Yes. Um, hopefully <coughs> that that helped. But I sent a link there, Julian, check that out because it's, I can't remember how many hours. It's a few hours long, but it really kind of goes into how to connect to each of these energies and everything that you can do kind of activity-wise, meditation-wise, other focused intentional things that you can do to bring forth your guides and also to get clarity on when they connect to you, how they connect to you. Okay, next question. 
Can the orb pictures that we capture on iPhones be explained, please? I realize they are energetic frequencies of beings such as angels and nature spirits. Orbs on phones <laughs> or on photos in general. Can they be explained? <laughs> We will try one second, please. We love our nature spirits. They can be very meddling though. <laughs> we told you in the beginning also that you are having an experience within a frequency that is around your earth plane. You are not the only species here. There are others in different frequencies. <clears throat> Oftentimes, you will see things which are referred to as orbs. They are nothing more than energy shifts from one frequency to another. Some of them will appear to be dark. Others will appear to be light. It depends on their vibrational patterns. Often darker things are a slower vibrational pattern, but we don't wish to tell you that they are evil. They are simply of a different vibrational pattern. The orbs are a different vibrational pattern too, and they all depend upon where this energy derives. From which frequency does it come into and out of? You may often see orbs <clears throat> that are coming from elemental energies as well. But you may also come from angelic energies as well. They may also come from galactic energies as well. It all depends upon its vibration and how it decides to enter within this particular frequency. But you may capture them on your technology, on your phones. Do with them what you desire, but know this, you're not alone. <laughs> All of those orbs are simply proof that you're not alone. And we can assure you, as we always do, your energy friends, <laughs> you wish to say, as we heard you say you wanted us to change, we will call them your energy friends are mm. here to assist you in many different ways. Energy friends, I like that. Yes, energy friends, because hmm. in essence, you are all energy. You all have energetic bodies. We see only your energetic bodies. That's how you appear to us. Hmm. And we see only beauty and love. That is what we see. Do you have to see all of their spirit animals as well? <laughs> spirit animals. Yes. The connectiveness of all who you are. Yes, we see that. Mm. We see only light. We see only love. We see only God and goddess. Mm. That's all we see. Mm. We do not focus on what you refer to as negative. We only focus on the highest that you truly are. We see the original you, <laughs> the authentic you. The true you. Is that good? That's cute. I like that. <laughs> we like your necklace and your earrings. They're pretty. Oh, thanks, guys. <laughs> Question. Okay, let's take two more and then we'll do um, a little energy healing and then we will wrap. Um, Jeff thinks we should hang a spaceship model in front of our Starfield background. <laughs> The commander, you call him. It's funny. I was thinking of getting rid of it because I thought it was a little too, a little too, I don't know, universe. <laughs> but you are the universe. I know. You are multi-dimensional <laughs> beings. You have the ability to go into multiple dimensions. I was, I would, universes. Jeff, I was looking at backgrounds that had trees and then it looked like trees were coming out of our heads. So we couldn't use those. <laughs> More questions. 
Another quest. Let's take one more question and then we'll do some energy healing. Can we do that? Yes, of course. <laughs> Does anybody have a final question before we do a little energy work? Nobody. Okay. So I guess we'll just do some energy healing work. Oh, Stu asked, how does he find his life purpose? <laughs> how does he find his life purpose? Yes. We are assuming that Stu is a he, but we don't know for sure. Because <laughs> there's no photo. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, you say, don't you? Yes, that's a human thing we do say. What is a life purpose? Everybody wants an absolute answer where absolutes don't exist. You are not absolute in anything that you do. You are here to have an experience. But if we are going to give you a life purpose, we will give you this one. Wake up. <laughs> Let that be your life experience now. Wake up and understand who you are, that you are as vast as the multiverse, that your energy forms are multi-dimensional. Wake up and have that your life purpose. And when you understand this information with your heart, mm. then you will understand your life purpose. We cannot tell you what it is, but you are the guru. You are the soul that only knows that. We are here to help, to lead you in the understanding of your life purpose. Perhaps your life purpose is to simply stay in this residence field in this lifetime, but perhaps it is to wake up so that you may become the true healing energy that you are, that you all are, that we see all of you we acknowledge all of you. I would add that the thing that gets in the way the most of actually feeling into, because it's really a feeling thing. It's an experiential thing. It's not an analytical thing. So it's getting the head and the mind out of the way and just allowing yourself to feel into it. That's, that's what's going to ignite it. Spirit doesn't work through our intellect. They don't work through our minds. They work through our hearts. You know, it took me 30 years to figure that one out. <laughs> Relax, all of you. At this moment in time, mm. feel your energy bodies vibrate mm. in time. Feel with your heart, see with your third eye, understand know who you are now. We are here to give you a rebirth, <laughs> a renaissance, an upgrade, an awakening, an enlivening, a spark, source light to everything that you are at this time now.
We are working with all things that are made up of you. DNA, chakras, meridians, pressure points, timelines, grids. We are multidimensional beings and we are you and we are assisting you at this time. You refer to it as a healing. We simply say we are giving you us mm -hmm. so that you may give you to others. This is how you raise the vibration of your collective consciousness now. Focus. Mm. Yeshua, mm. I am the soul of Yeshua. Mm. I take on the Christ, Christos energy, love energy of your planetary system. I will give you all of what I am unto all of you at this time so that you may know the Christ energy in you. And that is love, divine. I am who I am. Mm. I am that I am. May love and peace be with you all. Mm. May you be the love and peace that you so seek of me. What I say unto all of you, do not seek me, but seek you. Know thyself and you will know who I am. I came here to show you that. There is no building there is no place you must go except within. And there you will find me. I will light your path. I will be your guide. I will be the love. I will be the faithfulness. I will be the forgiveness that you seek. Mm -hmm. I will show you who you are, your authentic self, your true self, the energy being that you are. I will show you your meaning in this lifetime, but open your hearts. Mm -hmm. Let go of fear, let go of your ego. Focus on love and the vibration of it. Mm -hmm. And there you will discover yourself. There I am. There you are. We are together now. These are my words unto all of you. I am Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Another comes. Mm -hmm. It's likely Magdalene. <laughs> but I can't be sure. I am one who carries sacred symbols. Uh, I am the Metatron. Yes. I am the Seraphim energy. Mm. I 
work with your DNA as well. Mm. Metatron's a very strong energy for those of you who haven't experienced it before. Thank you all for being here, souls of divine light. You have received. <laughs> we are stepping back now. Okay. Thank you. Gaia, for receiving us. Thank you, all of you, souls, the multidimensional beings that you are. We are what you refer to us as ascended masters, but we are so much more. You are the ascended masters as well. Would you say, I mean, I'm curious why Metatron came through versus Magdalene. Was that um, kind of dependent upon what the energy of the collective group had called forward? No, it's what we call forward. Okay. Why did you decide on Metatron? Metatron works on many different levels. He will work, she will work, they will work <laughs> on your DNA structures. He will work on your meridians. She will work on your chakras as well. Mm. This is a multidimensional being. This is not what you think it is. You see Metatron as an angel and that is good. He is seraphim energy. Mm. He comes in the pairs, into twos. That is enough said at this time. Go in peace, be peace, be love, mm. because that's who you are and share it with others. We say to you all, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Om Hari Om, and love be with you. Mm. Pax, amor, gratitudo, <laughs> vobis cum est. Uh, you guys are funny. <laughs> thank you, Gaia. We are always here. Mm, Call up on us. Thanks, guys. Every time I come through, I get freezing cold. Yes, that is a different energy. Mm, man, it always turns our living room Your hands into freeze. a refrigerator when his energy comes through. <laughs> So they're leaving now and Anthony will be back momentarily. Mm. I'm very surprised Magdalene didn't come through today. She usually has more persuasion than even Metatron. <laughs> You back? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So why didn't Magdalene come through? Um, I don't know. I'm not quite <laughs> sure. I allow them to go ahead and choose who they want to come through. That's all. Yeah. I kind of get out of the way. I'm a part of them, but I also will get out of the way and allow them to do the work that they feel is necessary. So. Yeah. Um, hey, great oh, questions. Wow. Yeah, really, really good, good questions, questions today. Wow. We love all the questions mm. because it makes our guides work. It makes, I was seeing purple when Yeshua was there, and then it went zigzag green color when Metatron came through. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Yeshua's energy is always warm and cozy and fuzzy, and I always feel like I just kind of melt into love. And then when Metatron comes through, I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Metatron is what they refer to as a seraphim energy. He is, and I say he, um, but it's not quite angelic and it's not quite. Um, they say it's closest to the angelic realm yeah. energy. Um, yeah. So, but it's a beautiful energy, but it's super, super strong and yeah. difficult to hold at times. And it does make me feel um, chilly. It yeah. makes me feel very cold and, but that's how it manifests. 
Um, I don't associate cold with being um, as bad or evil. It's just a change in energy. That's all. That's mm -hmm. all it is. Um, are there any announcements you'd like to do? Yes. First, I will make an announcement. Oh. Thank you for being here, all of you. <laughs> Anthony is getting good at the announcements because Renee always forgets. Yeah, you know what? We don't have anyone to promote us, so we're going to promote us. Um, go to YouTube and please press Sub subscribe. Subscribe, yes, because we need a thousand people to subscribe before YouTube even YouTube recognizes doesn't us. doesn't even know that we exist <laughs> until we have a thousand subscribers. And it's free, so just hit the subscribe button and tell people. And we post stuff there all the time, so we'll yeah. be posting this. This is going to be posted this also. This video will be posted there, so you can go back. And I mean, obviously, we don't post our private courses and classes, of course. No. Um, for those who have taken courses and might be worried about that, <laughs> that is private. But. Is there anything you like to? Uh... Oh, well, yeah, just uh, um, we're going to be speaking at East West Books on uh, January 7th, that mm -hmm. evening, just for an hour. It's a freebie. Do and you want to put that into the chat oh, box? And then we're going to do a workshop on the 10th yes. on East West Books. And then we haven't announced this yet. Uh, well, we do have our master's course kicking. We only have one spot left for that, though. That is uh, kicking off on January 5th. And there's a bunch of you here who are in it. So you guys know about it. We see several people who are in our class already who are here. But there is one spot left. Um, and you can find out more about that here. And... Okay, so that's our advanced thing that kicks off on January 5th. And then we are doing two other courses for those not doing advanced or those who are doing the advanced course but want to do it as well. The Truth Behind Seraphim Angels. Now, the reason we decided to do this is because you guys told us to do this. Yes, we listened to all of yeah, you. Yeah, we listened to all of you. We would not have come up with that, actually. But people wanted to know more about yeah. Seraphim because we did a whole thing on Metatron and, you know, we really want to understand the Metatron and, and Sandalfin energy better. And so you guys said, okay, let's do something on Seraphim. And so that's what we're going to do. Um, and we have angels in quotes because they're not really angels. <laughs> As I say, we're not who we, who you think we are. And yeah. they are really, they are of, of all love energy and they're beautiful. But for me, I love to see them as uh, winged creatures and beautiful. And a lot of times when they do come to me, I do see beautiful white angelic like energy all the time, especially with the, um, with Yeshua energy. That's how it will appear to me. Okay, I have my links. She has all of I'm her links. I'm trying to get better at this. Yeah. I think um, uh, Dr. Um, um, Gabriel Hilberg. One of my <laughs> We're getting there. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being here. Have a wonderful, wonderful Sunday.